<laughs> what now, Sam? I'm having some difficulties here. Poke it. Use your wood and just poke it. Okay. You have no technique. <laughs> okay, come on, dog. Hold on, Griffin, hold get it. your ball. Come on. Oh, here we go. Ah! Yes! Yes! Oh, no! Oh, God, it's coming down. <laughs> I could have gotten better, but um, okay, let's see. A lot of people have asked, where are the Ultra Light videos? Well, this is one of them. Actually, this is probably more of an update to the Ultra Light projects because um, it is the dead of winter here in Ohio, and I have the itchiness to fly, and a lot of you guys have, you know, have actually asked, where, when are you gonna do more Ultra Light videos? So, this is the video. As you've probably seen, we're testing models out right now. This did not go very well. We'll come back to that in a minute, but first we have to talk about my MK2 project and where that thing is going to go. So this thing, honestly, I did kind of a lot of thinking. I think this thing is destined for the scrap heap. Now here's why. So as you can probably see in the background, we have the Aerolite 103. This is an ultralight I bought last year because I wanted to fly it last year, but unfortunately winter kind of came early and uh, that didn't really happen. But the more I got thinking about it, and the more when I designed this airplane, I designed this airplane to kind of mirror what I saw in traditional ultralights where you have a large wing area and you have a pretty large fuselage and all that stuff to get the wing loading down. And the reason they get the wing loading down, which is basically pounds per square foot of, uh, you know, of what the wing has to carry, is because things like that engine over there are really heavy. That engine is uh, a Rotax 447 and it weighs about 70-ish something pounds, give or take whatever. And now, when I built this plane, the power system for this was like for, I guess the power system weight itself was probably about 40 pounds all up with the batteries and everything. And that makes no sense because that thing has to carry a 70 pound engine. And what, how much is five gallons of fuel, Sam? Roughly 35 pounds, would you say? Sure. Okay, 35 pounds, whatever. But anyways, it's like 100 pounds of just weight as it carry for the power system. And that makes no sense for me to build an airplane that equivalent size to carry all that weight. It just simply gets draggy with the electrics and all that. And also I thought to myself, do I really want to do electric right now? I kind of want to spend more time flying. So this thing may go to the scrap heap, unfortunately. And uh, cause, uh, oh, another big mistake. You see those wings up there? Those end up being grossly overweight and they end up being about 45 pounds of panel. And that means it's 90 pounds of wing. And I expect that to be probably around 50 pounds for all of the wing weight. So that was a miscalculation. I probably could actually just rebuild these wings out of wood and fabric, and that would actually yield a pretty decent ultralight. But the thing is, I would still need a big motor for it, something you know like that, which is uh, 70 pounds. So I don't think I'm gonna use this. This thing is probably gonna be recycled for MK3, and we will talk about that when we go back over to the desk. Yeah. Okay, so MK3, what is it gonna be? A tank. No, not this. Okay, as you've probably already seen, we already, we already shreked this thing and flew it into a tree that did not go well. But this is part of the prototype uh, phasing. That's another thing I made a mistake with the second one. I really should have made a small model airplane prototype. And speaking of which, I actually see some, I saw someone else made a prototype. It was actually really cool. Some uh, some fan made um, a model of that thing, and it actually flew similar to it from what I you know garnished with the you know couple seconds I flew off the ground because it was really stable or unstable at high angle attack when it was coming to land with that wing waggling going on before that thing actually crashed. So we have that. Now, I did go through a number of design iterations before I... No, no, it's fine, we get this uh... Picked one. I was actually thinking I'd do something a little more extreme and doing a plank style airplane, but I kind of leaned away from this because I wanted a kind of good performer that would perform well at a slow, a slow airspeed because these things tend to behave a little bit weirdly when you're flying slow and you want to gain altitude quickly. They kind of mush a little bit and then they start climbing. And I don't think I really want that because my actual design mission with this next ultralight is to scud run, which is basically fly real low, fly between the valleys and all that. And this thing is probably not going to be the wisest type of airplane for that. So I gave up on that design quickly. Now fast forward to this thing. This is probably what we're actually going to end up building, which is basically a low wing or a mid wing version of the Aerolite, because that's the only way I could figure out how to mount this engine in a pusher configuration while making it look okay and everything kind of match up. I will talk about this. It's going to be a cantilever design, as you can see here. I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to build the rest of the wing, but it's going to be covered in chloroplast to be a little weird again. We're not doing foam this time because of um, chloroplast, pop rivets, and uh, a lot of fasteners, which will be used to attach that. So I think this should bounce well. It's gonna be, um, yeah, kind of like this. I think 
I think I should go test fly this now, right Sam? Yeah, let's go test crash it. So, oh wait, hang on. I gotta show you this. Yeah, did I also mention it's fuel powered? So I bought this. Thanks, Tucker Gott. Yeah, actually, he's uh, he flies the paramotor, the Scout paramotor, and they have the Viterazzi Moster 185. This looks like a really nice engine, so I figured, uh, oh, whatever, I'm just gonna buy an engine and just see what happens. This thing will turn about a 50 inch propeller, and it should produce about uh, 165 kilograms of thrust, which is somewhere around like 150 ish pounds, 160 pounds, or what does that translate to, Sam? I wasn't listening. Text. I was <laughs> okay, but anyways. I gotta figure out how to mount this thing on there. I was surprised I didn't get any um, mounting hardware or anything with this thing as far as like the kill switch, the throttle cable or anything. So I gotta figure out how to use that. Does anyone have any resources about paramotor engines? Because I don't want to screw this thing up. I would like to know more about it. I have the brake in manual, but the, the weird thing is Viterizi doesn't really give you any install information as what kind of throttle cables they want you to use or what kind of kill switch is approved. And what fuel bulbs or primers or what's the actual priming procedure for this Walbro carburetor. Cause I don't really know anything about two strokes. But anyways, let's go fly the test model. Oh wait, hang on, I, I'm forgetting a few more things. This plane is actually gonna be really neat for me because it's a lot of firsts. Also, check this out. A friend of mine, Dale uh, Stratton, sent us this. I'm sorry, Dale, it's been like months since I you know, said I was gonna do this. But check this out, this is a 3D printed airplane. Now I've looked at a lot of 3D printing stuff. I should probably assemble this real fast. All right, check that out. So that's pretty cool. Um, this is probably a foreshadowing of things to come because we are going to use this 3D printed plane even though I'm like six months behind on schedule. But he told me to test this thing to destruction so we're gonna put rocket motors on this and uh, yeah, we're gonna do that. But anyways, check these out. These are 3D printed ailerons or elevons in this case. But I'm seriously looking at this tech and you know, this might not actually be a bad thing to do for some of this airplane. So I'm actually gonna 3D print the ailerons for this. So that'll be part of the design features in there. So I'm gonna do a little bit of tinkering with that. And also what's neat about this too is if you look at this fuselage, this thing is actually TIG welded together and I haven't TIG ever in my life. So this is kind of like a first for me doing all that stuff. It's kind of awful, but hey, I'll get better hopefully by the time it comes to um, you know actually TIG welding the fuselage together because we have 4130 chromoly steel. Um, yeah, we actually went to, what's it, Travis, right Sam? Yes. Yeah, Travis, he has a Bad Apple LLC or whatever. It's like a small machining company. Bad Apple Machine and Fab. Okay, Machine Fab, yeah. But anyways, he helped us do some of this stuff. He showed us a little bit uh, like an intro to TIG welding, so huge thanks to him for that. He also machined this back plate for the uh, paramotor because this spinner is non-standard stuff. Okay, that's really enough rambling. We should actually go fly this thing because uh, I'm pretty sure we're losing viewers at this point. Pull up. <laughs> Just run. Th oh, that was okay for some quick testing. I'm not really sure about this yet. Oh, um, Sam, we were doing some discussing with calculations, right, for this as far as weight goes. Yeah, it's really heavy. Yeah, surprisingly, um, actually, my projected weight for this actual airplane when I come around to building it is going to be around 150 pounds empty, no fuel, no pilot. Uh, and the problem with, you did a bunch of math, blah, 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 and 
This model, if scaled down, should weigh, what do you say, about four something pounds? Yeah, about four and a half. Four and a half pounds. But the problem is this model right now, where's that scale? There it is. This model weighs a little bit, a little bit um, about the really close to ten pounds. So that's double the appropriate like wing loading or whatever for this test model. Also, Reynolds, Reynolds numbers get worse as you get smaller with the model. So this thing really flies okay-ish for as how heavy it is because this is solid steel. It's not tube. The actual plane will be constructed out of tube when I get around to it. I'm still spitballing around with ideas, but I guess we're just gonna, probably going to end it there as far as um, just this update video goes because I'm still not totally sold on these designs yet. I have to do a little more experimentation and really figure out what I want to have in the, another airplane. So yeah, sorry, this is a little bit of a boring video if you're not into the airplane stuff. However, we're probably gonna be back, back on track with this in a couple of months when I actually get time to do this because I think we have to go do some drone stuff, not only. Yeah, drone clash. So yeah, boring update video. Uh, we'll see you guys hopefully in the next video. Hey, Peter, you know the difference between you and your little test pilot? What? He's so handsome. That's awful.